Hello there, and welcome to Pick 6 Movies, the podcast where every season we select a theme, and then we find six movies all related to that theme, and then we give you some history on where and when and how and why the movie was made, and then after that, we give you a full review of the entire movie from start to finish to see if it's any good. Who is this we of which I speak? None other than my lifelong friend, Mr. Bo Ransdell, and myself, Chad Cooper. This is season 15, or as it's known around the Pick 6 Movies headquarters, A Flop is Born. And it features half a dozen films with professional singers who want to be actors, but they stink at it. This is episode 4, and it features one of the most recognizable singers from the 1990s. A decade that gave us such musical gems as Achy Breaky Heart, I'm Too Sexy, Who Let the Dogs Out, Mm, Bop, and The Macarena, also delivered unto the world Ice Ice Baby, as performed by the star of the movie featured in this very episode. Now, if you're like me, you're probably thinking, hey, I'd rather stick an ice pick in my ear rather than listen to any of those songs. But you got a movie called Cool as Ice, starring Vanilla Ice. Is it equally unwatchable as those songs are unlistenable? The answer to that question is, of course, yes. But we don't recommend putting that ice pick in your eyes, or heck, even watching this movie for that matter. Instead, stick around as we invite Mr. Bo Ransdell in here to introduce us to one of the worst things to come out of the 1990s, a decade that gave us Lou Bega's Mambo No. 5. So let's get my partner in crime in here to introduce us to Cool as Ice, because when there's a problem, Bo, he solves it. Check out this intro as Mr. Ransdell evolves it. Ice, ice, baby. Doon, 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 doon. Ice, ice, baby. Doon, 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 doon. What are you doing? Hey, pick six spot. Welcome back to the show. What are you doing in here with that primitive machine? First of all, this is a typewriter, and it's how I started writing. I decided to do a biopic. I did the slasher movie thing, and to be honest, there wasn't much money in it. But a big time movie in the vein of like Ray or Bohemian Rhapsody, this could be my ticket to Oscar gold. Who is the subject? That's the most exciting part. The subject is Vanilla Ice. You're an idiot. Wait, 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 hear me out. I know it sounds unlikely, but Vanilla Ice has the perfect life for a biopic. It hits every beat. I'm telling you, the guy was made for biographical film, probably starring Timothy Chalamet. I'm listening. For example, every biopic has to start with an inspiring story, right? Yes, that is the formula I have computed. Great. So let's go back to Dallas in the late 1980s. A kid known as Vanilla is making a name for himself. Now, Vanilla has the clunkier name of Robert Van Winkle, but growing up in a black neighborhood got him labeled Vanilla pretty quick. He never met his real father, taking his name Van Winkle from one of the men his mother was married to at the time, although he would not be the last man that Vanilla's mother married. She worked a lot of hand-to-mouth jobs to keep a roof over their heads and had a pretty colorful marriage history. Left largely to his own devices, Vanilla got deep into motocross and was actually really good at it. Along with his passion for bikes, he had a love of dance and poetry, and he made a name for himself around Dallas as both a great motocross rider and a dancer and beatbox performer. And it was only natural that Vanilla showed an aptitude for rap. City Lights was the hot club in Dallas for the intersection of cultures for dancers and rappers and boasted one of the most vibrant and frequently dangerous scenes in Dallas nightlife. From Thursday night until Sunday morning, the place would pound with beats as dancers showed off their moves while rap battles were conducted on stage. On his 20th birthday, still too young to get in the club officially, Vanilla was dared by his buddy Squirrel, which is always a fun thing to say, he was dared by Squirrel to get into City Lights and show off his moves. Vanilla could prove to everyone in the hottest club what he'd managed to prove to the residents of his all-black neighborhood. Despite his white skin, Vanilla 
belonged. And Vanilla Ice at the time didn't drink or do drugs. Yet, I know how this goes. Just wait for it. Enjoy the rise, Pig Six Spot. This is the fun part. So Vanilla, who did not do drugs or drink at the time in this story, gets his first dose of liquid courage from his friend Squirrel in the form of a mixture Squirrel called Runny Nose. This scene naturally writes itself. All hopped up on Runny Nose, Vanilla enters the club talent contest, where he is paired off with a rapper named Earthquake, his nemesis in Vanilla's first public rap battle. Although the crowd has seen a hint of the kids dancing, Vanilla sticks out here too, a white face in a sea of color. But he's been here before. He knows how to win an audience. Earthquake goes first in our movie, and he's good. He knows the scene. He's been around. And then comes this scrawny white kid, and Vanilla lays it out. He starts with some rhymes, which drifts into beatboxing, back to rap, then to some dancing. He's hitting Earthquake with all he's got, and the audience, first skeptical, is now on board, chanting, Go, white boy, go, white boy, go. Rumors came after that that Earthquake threatened to fight Vanilla that night, but what is certain is that night changed Vanilla Ice's life. The audience had turned around on Vanilla to adore him. Like the Russians at the end of Rocky IV? Just like that. And because City Lights was the biggest club for hip-hop in Dallas, a r people from record companies were on hand the night of Vanilla's big break. Also in attendance, John Bush, the manager of City Lights, who knew this kid could be big. In a matter of days, Vanilla Ice had a management deal with q and was the resident act at City Lights, doing nightly sets for the crowds. Looking back later, John Bush, the guy who owned City Lights, said, Ice owned the stage when he stood upon it. He was a king. And then came the drugs. Just hold on. Don't rush to the negative. It's unhealthy. Not only was Ice's popularity growing in the area, hip-hop and rap in general was exploding in this country. Rap went mainstream with Two Live Crew and MC Hammer, and Ice was serving as the opening act when these guys came through Dallas and City Lights. Hammer said when he first saw this white kid playing for an all-black crowd, he was skeptical too, and then he heard him rap and saw him dance, and as Hammer himself put it, quote, he wasn't trying to emulate dance moves, he was dancing. In 1989, Ice was the first act on a tour that featured such icons as Ice-T, NWA, and Public Enemy. When Chuck D saw Ice perform, the frontman for Public Enemy tried to sign him to his record label. An associate at the time recalls that Chuck D saw Vanilla Ice perform and saw how the audience responded to this rapping and dancing kid and said, quote, I could make a lot of money off that white boy. Earthquake, who you may recall from earlier in our story. The rap battle guy. Precisely. Not only was he the first opponent for Vanilla Ice's rap skills, he was the house DJ at City Lights and an up-and-comer in his own right. He, like Ice, was part of q management, and q wanted to turn Vanilla, now Vanilla Eyes, thanks to their marketing, into a real star, and to do that, you had to have a hit. Sir mix lot had just done it with Baby Got Back, and now it was Ice's turn. So, q charged Earthquake with writing the hit Ice needed. Earthquake was influential, but he was also sleeping in the living rooms of friends until he could score some real money. So when q asked him to do a song for Ice, Earthquake thought he had just the thing. Thanks to some recent advances in sampling technology, Earthquake had in mind to use Play That Funky Music as a sample for Ice's big hit, which he did, but it also happened that a white rap duo called BMOC had used that same sample just the year before. So Earthquake also tried a few other samples. He dove into the stacks until he found Queens under pressure, and then tinkered for weeks with the sample finding just the right beat to put underneath it. And once he had that beat, he took further inspiration from Spike Lee's School Days. The Alpha Phi Alpha Boys have a chant that goes, Ice, ice, baby, too cold, too cold, which you may recognize as the hook of Vanilla Ice's hit single, Ice, Ice, Baby. There's actually somebody holding up a sign that says Ice, Ice, Baby in that scene. Now, there are conflicting stories about what happened next. Give me the movie version. Right. So, Ice loves what he heard, and Earthquake wants him to finish the lyrics before he gives anything over to Ice. Ice refuses, and Earthquake asks q to erase those samples. Then, a month later, Earthquake hears Ice Ice Baby on the radio. 
Now, I says that he completed the song without ever making it clear to Earthquake that he intended to do so, and that all of this was just a wacky Three's Company-esque misunderstanding. But regardless of that, Ice Ice Baby was playing on local stations, and people liked it, even in this thinly produced first version. q -on then brought in producer k Ree, who would go on to produce Mac Dre and Young Lay, and he put together some songs for an album called Hooked for Vanilla Ice, which was released on Ichiban Records, an indie rap label out of Atlanta. q -on couldn't sign Ice to bigger labels because they simply didn't want a solo white rapper. One for lack of trying. And so the first single was released, which was Play That Funky Music, and Ice hit the road to make the single a hit, much to no avail. But he was touring in a van with three other dancers, and then a DJ in Columbus, Georgia, happened to give the B-side of Play That Funky Music a spin at a party, and that B-side was, of course, Ice Ice Baby. The song blew up on local radio, and that popularity started to spread throughout the Southeast. Most listeners, who were mostly black, assumed that Ice also was black, despite his name. But suddenly, Ichiban Records was selling almost 50,000 copies of this record hooked. And then q -on decided, this song needs a video. The video was shot in Dallas's Deep Ellum District, posing as Miami. And the Florida references appealed to The Box, a video request channel in the Sunshine State. BET got on board quick too, and suddenly the big record companies were interested in a solo white rapper after all. Ice was all set to sign a deal with Def Jam Records, but q -on intervened. Another deal had come across the table, a company called SBK. The CEO of SBK had heard Ice Ice Baby and was certain this was going to be a giant hit across the globe, so he paid Ice $1.5 million before he ever met the guy. SBK bought out the contract with Ichiban Records, and the album Hooked was remastered and edited, added to, and ripped apart until it became To The Extreme, the first big record from Vanilla Ice, featuring the hit single Ice Ice Baby. It hit number one in October of 1990, both the single and the album, and Vanilla Ice was shattering records, pushing his old pal MC Hammer out of the number one slot on the album Billboard charts. SBK even throttled production of the single so that more people would buy the full album, squeezing every last drop of blood they could out of this particular stone. SBK estimated that ICE generated $100 million in revenue for them in about four months. Have we hit a peak? We have, Pick Six Spot. In just a matter of weeks, articles were coming out shredding the details of ICE's publicity package the biography that you send to the press for their articles. Just a little bit of digging by any reporter could disprove some of the claims in Isis' bio that he had attended high school with two live crews, Luther Campbell, or that his mother worked at a university and not a small college, or that he was in one motocross league and not a different motocross league. None of it really amounted to much, but only a few weeks before this, Millie Vanilli had been caught in a lip-syncing scandal that ended their careers. The music media was looking for the next big fraud, and the first successful solo white rapper was Fair Game. The irony here was that Ice had a credible background. He had actually grown up in black neighborhoods, trailblazed in the black music scene, and had the respect of his peers as a legitimate talent. But when people heard that Vanilla Ice was actually Robert Van Winkle, and by the way, there are all these other things he lied about, well, Vanilla Ice was tough to take seriously. And giving interviews splitting hairs about how Ice Ice Baby Sample and the original Under Pressure weren't helping either. And while much of that was made in the press, Earthquake suggested that Queen and Bowie's interests were getting a big cut of the song's profits, so all this talk of musical purity aside, the people who had made the music that was sampled were getting paid plenty. And this was much of the case with Ice, saying dumb things with little thought given and finding himself savaged in the press for indiscrepancies in his life story or how he talked about his music. SBK was dressing him up as a fashion icon too, complete with these giant hammer-esque harem pants, and that wasn't helping matters either. And then there were the critics. 
mainstream music critics were mostly ambivalent, but hip hop critics went ballistic. They were already pissed about the bland MC Hammer releases like Don't Touch This, which many in the hip hop community felt undersold the value and the depth of the art, repackaging it as inoffensive and style driven instead of the lyrical bombs being dropped by Public Enemy and NWA, not to mention rising stars on both coasts who were talking about harsh realities in ways no one had ever heard before. And here was Vanilla Ice, dancing around like a clown, talking about waxing chumps like a candle. The hip-hop elite eviscerated Ice, ensuring he would never be taken seriously as a hip-hop artist. Nonetheless, in January of 1991, Ice was accepting an award on stage at the American Music Awards for Best New Pop Rock Artist. As he concluded his acceptance speech, Ice added, And to the people who try to hold me down and talk bad about me, kiss my white butt. He was defiant. Ice had earned this after all, and it had to be the beginning of something great. he just finished shooting his ninja rap bit for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze, and he was honest to goodness dating Madonna. How much more can you make it in this world? But if the reception to Ice Ice Baby by music intelligentsia and the intense scrutiny of his hazy background had been body blows, a haymaker was coming in the form of Jim Carrey. In Living Color had been on less than a year, but it was groundbreaking and quickly adopted as a cultural touchstone for young black viewers before exploding all over the rest of pop culture. And Jim Carrey was at the tip of that spear, he was wild and brave and hysterical. And then he delivered a song parody called White White Baby. It skewered not only Ice as a dancer and fashion mess, but it stated unequivocally that Ice was appropriating black culture and repackaging it for a white audience. One line goes, quote, I'm living large and my bank is stupid because I listen to real rap and dupe it. Ouch. Yeah, a lot of people saw that, and one of them was Vanilla Ice. Two days after that aired, he appeared on the Arsenio Hall show, which was both incredibly popular and known to be a rowdy crowd. Arsenio went after Ice, calling him out on the inconsistencies in his biography and for him playing the victim at the American Music Awards. Ice tried to defend himself, even turning to his old pal Flava Flav, who was sharing the stage with him at the time. When he looked to Flay for support, Hall asked, quote, Is that why you brought him out? To show that you have a black supporter? Double ouch. The same night, infamous rap maestro Suge Knight showed up at Ice's hotel room, allegedly dangling him out the window to secure points on Ice Ice Baby. Suge said Ice stole lyrics from one of his artists, but Ice contends it was straight extortion, and Suge used that money to fund Death Row Records. And there are, naturally, multiple accounts of just how that went down and Ice ended up being dangled over the balcony. Just the good one. Fair enough. So, after the Arsenio show, Suge Knight comes to Ice's hotel room with the alleged writer of Ice Ice Baby, Mario Johnson. Ice speaks his piece, and when Mario attempts to give his side, Ice keeps interrupting, defending himself point by point. Earthquake then says, Suge told Ice that everyone had been quiet and respectful of him, and if Ice interrupted Mario one more time, he would throw Ice off the balcony. Ice did not seem to take that threat seriously at first, and one thing led to another. And Ice needed another hit. SBK released a second record, a live album called Extremely Live, that everyone agreed felt rushed, badly produced, and generally shitty. Also, Marky Mark was climbing the charts and had survived the media gauntlet of being another white rapper, while Ice was getting pounded again when the band Third Bass dropped a single called Pop Goes the Weasel, which one might call a diss track aimed at Ice. Notably, Henry Rollins of Black Flag fame played the Vanilla Ice stand-in in the video. It was yet another example of the medium of music itself pushing back against Ice. And the nail in the proverbial coffin here was the subject of our discussion tonight, Cool as Ice. The movie was financed by Ice's label, SBK, who had conceived of it as a sort of jailhouse rock for Vanilla Ice, but he frankly didn't have the acting chops and the whole thing was bad. Stay tuned for more on that in just a minute. 
the movie bombed, making only $1.2 million against a $6 million budget. The soundtrack album was also released, and it too tanked. Vanilla Ice was done. And then the drugs? And then the drugs, but not just the drugs. Ice had been thrust quickly into stardom, and just as quickly he was told he was unworthy of that stardom. Of course he drank. He did drugs. He spent years trying everything to be a star again. He became a motocross rider and a jet ski competitor, something he'd loved since he was a kid, and he was ranked sixth in the world for jet ski racing at one point. He tried to grow some dreads and do some reggae as a weed rapper, but that tanked too. He overdosed, he cleaned up, he got married, he tried to ride the new metal wave with terrible results, and then he kind of washed up on the shores of VH1's celebrity reality show, The Surreal Life. And it's here that I says he got some of the best advice of his life from the unlikeliest of sources, Tammy Faye Baker. She told him, honey, you are who you are because of who you were. Embrace it. And he has. He's been doing a renovation show called The Vanilla Ice Project for a decade and has found an odd musical resurgence thanks to his alignment with Insane Clown Posse and their rabid fan base, The Juggalos, and he seems genuinely grateful to his fans for keeping him around, and he works hard, but he always did. His story isn't done, but he's always going to live in the shadow of that moment when he had it all, when Ice Ice Baby was the biggest song in the world, and then he watched as everyone around him seemed to take a little piece of it until there was nothing left. I don't know if he's a hero, and I honestly don't think much of him as a rapper, but these accusations that he wasn't earnest, that he hadn't earned his spot in the limelight, that's all untrue. Whatever else, Vanilla Ice was for real, and if you take nothing else away from this pick six spot, make it that, not a hero, just... A good character. Yeah. A good character. Now, I just have to finish this script and... A search of recent news generated this result. A film version of the Vanilla Ice story is in production developed by Dave Franco. Huh. So, this was all meaningless, then? I enjoyed it. I mean, I guess we got an intro out of it. Uh, Pick Six Spot, could you get Chad in here? I need to talk about this. Ladies and gentlemen, Vanillas and Ices. It is cool as ice from 1991. Thanks, Pick Six Spot. Franco, really? Franco? And welcome back to Pick 6 Movies. I, of course, am one of your hosts, Bo Rand, still with me. As always, the uh, the words to my mother, uh, Chad Cooper, how are you doing this evening? I'll stop there so we don't have to pay any royalties for whatever. I don't want to have Suge Knight or somebody else come and toss me off a balcony. But to answer your question, Bo, I'm doing pretty darn well. Great. Well, we're about to change all that. <laughs> I know. Sometimes I feel a bit like Loki from the Avengers when, when mm -hmm. he first arrives and he says, I've been burdened with terrible purpose. And this season in particular, I have assembled a lineup of some of the shittiest movies that have ever been made. Uh, yes, you have. The best is yet to come or the worst. Uh, depending on how you want to look at it. This movie, Cool as Ice, is... Because I, I kind of went back and forth a little bit, and this is a real, a real bad movie. Yeah, it's a real fart in the elevator before you walk out. As the introduction alluded to, it kind of happens at an interesting point where, like... Whereas Spice World was sort of like at, at the the apex of the Spice Girls, right? Like, they were the biggest thing in the world when, when Spice World came out. Right. <laughs> when cool as ice came out like nah. vanilla ice had already right he was already a joke <laughs> and and as again as the introduction pointed out i i don't know that that's entirely fair but fair or not that's what was happening and so when when this movie came out you, people could not have given a shit less about uh this movie it could have been lost to time thankfully it was not 
When this movie came out, it was October of 91, and it debuted in the number 13 spot at the box office, right between Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, Mm -hmm. which had been in theaters for five months prior. (laughs) And just ahead of Terminator 2 Judgment Day, which had been in theaters for four months prior. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Number one at the box office that weekend, Bo? Want to give a guess? I uh, couldn't even begin to. It's Other People's Money, starring Danny DeVito, oh. Penelope Ann Miller, and Gregory Peck. What a great final scene that movie has. It is. That movie has a 31% freshness rating over on Rotten Tomatoes. That's bullshit. I agree. It's an example of how Rotten Tomatoes is just an inaccurate measure of a film's quality. I quote, as you well know, the buggy whip speech from other people's money a fair amount because it's such a sharp piece of writing. And it's totally true. You know, the whole notion of you want to know how to become obsolete, get a growing share of a shrinking market. I, I agree. That movie is based on a stage play by the same name. And it's interesting. If I told you there was a movie starring Danny DeVito and Gregory Peck, you'd watch that, right? Right. I would be like, oh, is this is the sequel to Hoffa? Where it's Danny DeVito and a super actor? It's the sequel to The Omen. Oh my God. <laughs> well, Davian, you've certainly gotten much balder. <laughs> Listen, I want to talk to you about Satan, Dad. You're probably wondering how I survived all those knives. <laughs> Norman Jewison directed that. He was coming off a of Moonstruck and a soldier's story. Yeah. Other People's Money is as good a movie as one deserves to be to be tops at the box office. And Cool as Ice deserved to be in 13th place because it's just garbage. Life isn't always just, but that was a case where justice was fair. I was surprised that this movie is rated PG. Was that a surprise to you? No. No? With the popularity of movies like Boys in the Hood and other urban films. (laughs) Well, but that's not what this is. (laughs) I expected more guns and just like high intense action. Truthfully, because I'd never seen this before. What I really expected was a like a rap version of Footloose. But that didn't happen either. It's more of that than Boys in the Hood, though. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's uh, like I've never seen Footloose, but I assume that this is much closer to that you've never seen footloose no oh my god we will remedy that situation very soon a movie about a kid his love of dance propels him to stand up against the small town authoritarian john lithgow is the preacher in town who prevents children from dancing chris penn is in it before he got all fat Does John Lithgow murder wantonly like in Blowout? If not, I don't care. He just walks around going, You there! Stop all that dancing! It's against the Lord's desires! Have some progresso soup! I I just don't care about movies where the focus is somebody who's just gotta dance. Fame or Footloose or... Bo, do you care about any of the movies we discuss on this podcast? Some of them. (laughs) I have a great deal of fondness for that King Kong movie. (laughs) <laughs> well, there's one, all right? Kingdom of the Spiders. I love that movie. These are all movies you pick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And actually, the the one that we're going to talk about in the finale, to tease that, kind of a weird favorite of mine, even though it's total shit. So, hey, speaking of total shit, yeah. let's talk about Cool as Ice. Yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll quit teasing episodes that I kind of would rather be doing instead of talking about <laughs> Cool as Ice. But here, all right, so this movie, when it opens up, Chad, it could not be more 1990s. No. I talked about it in the intro, but it is as much an in living color opening as you could get away with and and not actually be opening the show in living color yeah it's got naomi campbell and she's singing her part of the title song cool as ice everybody get loose it's essentially just a full music <laughs> video of vanilla ice performing a hundred percent that's all it's it is. the worst man let me also point out here that the best thing about this movie hands down is the cinematography that is because it, this was shot by yanis kaminsky who is steven spielberg's dp <laughs> i mean not at the time obviously but 
since has gone on to do like all of the big Spielberg films and the guy's got a great eye yes the, like all, what you're seeing is all 1990s overblown colors and oversaturated looks and and it all the quick editing and Dutch angles while people are dancing and it all looks like shit but mm-hmm. it's not it's good looking shit because yeah, of Janusz yeah. Kaminski <laughs> It's Vanilla Ice. He's rapping into a work light periodically, which is kind of weird. If you remove the rapping, the montages, and the unnecessary kidnapping plot in Act 3, this movie would be two minutes long, and that would just be the end credits. It would be two montages and, and the credits. Yes, you're right. Much like the film Blade, a pipe burst, but instead of blood, which would be much cooler, everybody just gets wet while they dance. Yeah, and there's a bunch of backlight coming through, like, a warehouse uh-huh. fan yeah because everyone's just hip-hopping and pop locking around vanilla ice is wearing these colored camouflage pants and he's got this bright orange windbreaker on and no shirt he has a baseball hat that he picked up at lids while he was at the mall uh-huh. and the tag is still hanging off the side like he's mini pearl uh-huh my wife wrote that joke <laughs> Tell her I said hello. The thing that will probably be unspoken for much of this show, but should be in the back of the listener's mind at all times. Don't ever watch it. So two things that the listener should have in the back of their minds uh, at all times is that not only should they not watch this movie, everybody in this movie looks fucking terrible. It is all just the loose pants and everything is orange and blue and it's semi Asian design. It's just the early 90s. It is is all of that just vomited all over this movie because they were sort of pitching Vanilla Ice as a bit of a fashion icon. So they have him dressed ridiculously. Yeah, he looks like a clown. Yes, at all times, he looks like fucking nonsense. <laughs> So just keep it in your mind. Why does he start singing into a mechanic's light as opposed know. to the microphone at one point? Because uh, it seems cool, I guess. I mean, wouldn't he know you don't sing into a light bulb? <laughs> well, let, let's not make any assumptions <laughs> here because there's a lot of things that one vanilla ice does right. that, that are questionable in terms of mm. high order decision making, let's say. <laughs> He's the kind of guy, Chad, that that like has a program where he gets a job right like it's Mm, stocking milk at the piggly wiggly yes he is getting work via the program he is not finding work on his own there is somebody that's helping with all of that paperwork because that's probably a little above what he's capable of yeah after he finishes his rap routine i always thought or always i thought at the time when you're watching all this that this is like just some like imaginary thing that's happening to introduce the movie and then like the credits will end and then we'll cut to a movie but it turns out this is really going on because as the credits end it's just them hanging out in this space where they're like yo yo i guess we're done now is everyone going home the end vanilla ice and his three black friends jazz sir Uh d and princess they all accompany him as he walks out of this warehouse and one of his friends i believe was the dj in the club while he was rapping and i maybe the other two were dancers i didn't really pay attention and one of them's naomi campbell that he passes by and she's like you really lit it up in their eyes yeah, but she's not part of his entourage. No, she's just no, no. saying, see you later. Right. I'm going to go cash my check now. <laughs> right. You will not see me in this movie again. I'm the Elton John of this film, only I will not be returning to sing periodically. As they leave the nightclub, this blonde girl comes over and she looks like she's doing this 1990s era Buffy the Vampire Slayer cosplay. She goes over and she takes a piece of paper out and she writes her name on it, which is Monique. And then she writes her phone number. But this movie is edited so poorly, it looks like she only writes the first three numbers, which are 555. And then she tucks it into Vanilla Ice's front pocket on that sweet orange windbreaker he's wearing. And meanwhile, his posse, you know, Jazz, Sardi, and Princess, mm-hmm. are all watching as this goes down, and they're like, oh, look at you, Ice, because clearly he's constantly getting the ladies. 
Chad. He's like, yo, yo, I got her digits. They are five. That'll be easy to remember. All I have to do is pick up the phone and hit five until she starts talking. So a uh, bit of ice goes over with his posse of three. And shockingly, they all get on motorcycles and it's still nighttime. And they speed off into the mountains of California. Maybe it's Kentucky. Might be Idaho. I have no idea where this movie takes place. California-ish? I, we can go with that. It doesn't matter because right. they go to small town USA here in a couple of minutes and they never leave. It just begs the question, are they just a roving band of rappers and dancers biking town to town and having adventures, as seems to be the case? I would watch that if it was an Adult Swim animated <laughs> series. Done by the folks who brought you C-Lab 2021. Or that Mike Tyson mystery show. Uh-huh. I would watch that once and then I'd never watch it again. But that seems to be what they're doing and it, as morning comes immediately like yeah they just rode their motorcycles until the sun comes up right and vanilla ice spies a pretty lady on a horse which he takes as an invitation to be the biggest asshole possible mm -hmm. yo yo y'all watch this and so he jumps somehow the fence into the field where this girl is riding her horse which spooks the horse throwing her to the ground Aside from the part of how he jumped the fence, uh -huh. everything you said lines up. Do you have an explanation for how he got over that fence? It seemed to just, know. much like the airwolf, he's just got a magic bike, what does what it needs to. This young woman was riding her horse, uh -huh. and an asshole dressed up like a melted box of Crayola crayons <laughs> launched his motorcycle into the air, slammed uh -huh. onto the ground, scared her horse, and thus threw her violently to the earth below. And when he gets off his bike and is like, yo, yo, are you hurt? She stands up and punches him in the gut, right? and immediately he's like yo yo why did you do that and she's like why the fuck do you think i just did that you know bo she could have killed him slugging him in the gut like that that's how houdini died oh we should be so lucky <laughs> uh if that were the end of this movie if he was just like oh i think you hit my doom, spleen doom, 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 doom. Doom, 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 doom. <laughs> quick sir d get over here you were the one i loved best off in the distance his three friends are just laughing at him because he's getting beat up by this unsaddled female equestrian yo you hit pretty good for a girl and she's like i'll take that as a compliment as she rides off on her horse and Ice looks back at his posse. Yo, yo, she likes me. Dude, this movie is so lazy with the simplest of details. For example, in this scene, I'm going to forego how he launched his motorcycle into this pasture. But I just wanted to know, how's he going to get his motorcycle out? Like, is that same vanilla ice gravity defying physics? I I'm thinking about this too much. Sir D, Jazz, <laughs> can you get over here and lift my bike? Maybe they get paid to watch him. I kind of think they are court appointed. <laughs> just, oh, Vanilla, you dance so good, man. <laughs> I think I met a pretty lady. Oh, Vanilla, you know you're not allowed to date. We got to get you back by Tuesday, your next shift at the IGA. I am good at stacking mill. You are the best, Ice. I know. Would you like to have my phone number? Here's a piece of paper. No, Ice, you know we live with you. Oh, yeah. We've met before. Yeah, we take care of you. I appreciate that. Yeah, we appreciate you, Ice. Now go have fun. Okay, watch me rap. Look how fast I can spin in a circle. Yeah, you're real good. <laughs> I, this reminds me of that time you got on that rocket ship outside the IGA, and you kept saying, put another quarter in, put another quarter in. That's good. I enjoy riding that. It is a lot of fun oh boy jazz could just uh watch you all day he has to that's what the court told him i know i know it's good that you remember that though that's a good sign yeah so vanilla ice and his three court appointed um conservators uh in posse <laughs> they all drive their motorcycles into smallsville usa and then sir d's motorcycle breaks down in the middle of main street across from the candy store and the hardware store and the large wooden cross store and mm -hmm. the sheet store and Sir D's motorcycle, it's all busted. But rather than move the motorcycle off to the side of the road like normal people would do, this quartet of urban hip-hop stars, they just start tinkering with the bike in the middle of the road, which pisses off all the white folk in this town, and they just start honking their horns as it's backing up 
up traffic as these four out of town pop lockers are causing a bit of disruption. And then one of them leans his head out the window and, you know, shouts at him. He's like, get out of the road. And then all four of them stand up and the guy's totally freaked out to see three black people in his town. And it's a real, and he goes back. That does seem to be the thing that startles him is he's just like, blacks. Which is strange because there is no other moment in this movie where race is a like a factor at all, except for this one moment. I guess you can make the argument that maybe it's just because they look outlandish or something. But again, that's just not how the the scene plays. Or because they're black. A hundred percent why he freaks out. But we move away from that to see more people gawking. And you're like, is this also because they're black? What movie am I watching? Of course it is. It's either that or it's the fact that Vanilla Ice is now towing Sir D's bike behind his. And because they're black. And mostly because they're black and in the whitest town in America. They are the only black people in this town. Also, their motorcycles, I think they're ninja motorcycles, maybe. I don't know motorcycles, but they are overly stylized motorcycles from the the early 90s. There's a lot of like Jackson Pollock-esque kind of splash designs on neon colors. Again, everything in this movie looks as bad as it possibly could given the time that it was made our foursome comes across this house that is an hoa's worst nightmare (laughs) the roof is painted like a world map there are stairs on the outside that go up to nowhere maybe the roof each of the walls is painted in multiple different colors there are 12 matching globes on the front lawn that are perched atop sticks like lawn ornaments and vanilla ice says Yo, yo, check out this crazy place. And his crew of overseers like, hey, all right, Ice, let's let's go over here. Do you need to make a number one or number two? Not right now. I already did it in my pants. Yo, yo, do you think they have snow cones here? You know that Ice, they might. Let's go see what they have to say. I know normally I get a vanilla snow cone because it's like my name. But I Uh think this time I would like a cherry snow cone. You know what? I think that the last time we got cherry, you really got it all over you. I think that vanilla is probably the best flavor for you. And if they do have snow cone here, you need to tell them that you want a vanilla snow cone or as everyone else calls it, a snow cone with no flavor in it. How about you get me a cherry one and it'll be our secret. I tell you what, Ice, I'm going to get you a very special cherry one that has invisible, tasteless cherry sauce. How's that sound? That sounds like the best snow cone ever. It will be, Ice. Trust us. So, Roscoe, the owner of this crazy house, he yeah. comes running out. Sidney Lassick is the actor's name, and you you will know him if you saw him. He he was in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest very famously. He's been in every television show that ever was. Uh, he's just a really good character actor. He was in Carrie and played the teacher that told Tommy that his poem was terrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fuck Tommy. <laughs> he's a real Johnny-come-lately in that movie. Oh, maybe carries okay doesn't matter man you're gonna (laughs) bucket to the fucking skull enjoy prom piece of shit yes split camera tuxedo trying on motherfucker (laughs) roscoe comes running out and he's wearing overalls and a baseball cap that has the words dial a prayer on it but his character isn't religious at all quietly you don't have to advertise it you can (laughs) you can keep the faith in your own way roscoe starts screaming about vanilla ice's motorcycle hey you're late you were supposed to be here an hour ago you know what your motorcycle isn't even prime i'm gonna give you five hundred dollars for it and vanilla ice says yo yo i don't want anything for my motorcycle i would like a snow cone please with invisible cherry sauce look you just get him a snow cone with vanilla if you would and i'll i'll take care of the sauce Roscoe calls his wife May to come out to haggle with Vanilla Ice about the price of this motorcycle. And May is played by Dodie Goodman, who was Blanche in both Grease and the sequel Grease 2. She was also the receptionist in the movie Splash, Mrs. Stimler, who got struck in the head by lightning. Yeah, that's right. Who wore her bra on the outside? I was like, wait, was she in Splash? I remember seeing that. I couldn't remember she was the secretary until you just said that. Splash is a far superior movie. Uh, than the one we're talking about now. Oh, yeah. Roscoe and May say that they can fix Sir D's busted motorcycle. And May says, come on in. We'll get you fixed up in a jiffy. So we cut to May and Roscoe reading.
reading the owner's manual for this particular motorcycle because they don't know how to fix it. Yeah. And at this point, the wheels on this movie come off. And, Bo, all bets are off. (laughs) The movie stops. It just stops for the rest of the movie. The drugs kick in. Anything's possible. And this is our real first of many montages in this film. We were just out of Barstow when the first montage kicked in. We can't stop here. This is ice country. So inside this house, Serdi is making a sandwich. And I think he might be pregnant because (laughs) it's got chunky peanut butter, pickles, sardines, mustard, pineapple, all on white bread. Bo, could you imagine such a sandwich? They call that the Weird Al, Chad. Look! A pickle and peanut butter sandwich. You shouldn't have. In another room of May and Roscoe's house, Princess is sitting on this white couch that's covered with quotes from Shakespeare. And then the wall behind her has similar wallpaper that's covered in quotes from Shakespeare with black font on a white background. And during this scene, Princess is considering eating some blue hard-boiled eggs. And in the foreground are a salt and pepper shaker. So they look really great big because they're closer to the camera. And eventually Princess reaches out and grabs a salt shaker. But it turns out, Bo, it's huge. Yeah, it's a top secret gag. It's a real Lewis Carroll inspired moment. (laughs) Right. Or Zucker Brothers. Take your pick. So Jazz is in another room and he's playing with a dart gun and he has a jeweler's light strapped to his head. While outside, Vanilla Ice is practicing spinning around in circles Mm -hmm. with his orange jacket unbuttoned, no shirt, with a gold necklace just sort of aimlessly dancing around as he spins. I like it when I spin around a lot and I feel weird and sometimes i fall down i also like to roll down hills if you will rake up a pile of leaves i will happily jump in them for you also if you would like to pile the leaves on top of me and i will jump out of them and surprise you i would also (laughs) like that (laughs) <laughs> about this time cat the girl who was on the horse earlier she drives by in this white trans am or camaro or something with her boyfriend nick and they stop the car and apparently they live directly across the street from roscoe and may and vanilla i sees her in this car and his response is oh yeah it's just like an opportunity for chaos is seen and he is drawn to it like a moth to a flame it's very funny and so he just wanders off and meanwhile his caretakers are like wait a second who's watching vanilla ice right now has anyone seen him i thought you were watching. oh my god you know the routine we give it 15 minutes before we call the police where's my lighter Oh my God, he's got the lighter. (laughs) Across the street, Nick and Kat are having an argument about Kat going away to college. And we've not discussed this yet, but Kat, or Kathy, is played by Kristen Mentor, Mm -hmm. who is the person you cast in a movie when you can't get Jennifer Connelly. But you really want Jennifer Connelly. Yes. She was also the big sister in those first two Home Alone movies. And she went on to be an ER and she was on that Highlander series. What I'm really saying is that this turn of a movie did not end her career. So good for her. She's kind of the best thing about it in terms of just an actor who seems to be giving a shit. The dad is kind of there. Like he's clearly trying to do something, but she's all right in this movie. There are moments where you're like, look, there is no way that any rational person would be attracted to vanilla ice in this film. No, but there are moments where you're like, all right, she's selling this. She seems genuinely charmed by him, which is irrational as we are soon to joke about. There is an equal likelihood of her being attracted to and falling in love with with a children's birthday clown as there is of her falling in love with vanilla ice in this movie her being attracted to him the way he is presented in this film is entirely unreasonable if he had been a german shepherd or a bag of undeliverable mail it would have had an equal likelihood of occurring if it had been a movie about her falling in love with a vanilla ice statue in the park much more interesting film Absolutely. And honestly, better performance out of the statue. Nick and Kat are arguing about Kat going off to college because Nick is an insecure asshole with anger issues. Also, a little later, we're going to find out he has a drinking problem. This dude is transplanted from a 1984 film. Is he a high school student as well? Or is he one of those creepy guys who hangs out around high schools, you know, doing that all right, all right, all right shit? I think he's a little older because he gives her a lot of shit about like, oh, college girl about to go away and better herself. 
fulfill her dreams. I'm going to mock you. Get an education. Learning things. Learning skills. Being able to earn money. <laughs> Fulfilling what, what potential you were given by the good Lord. Fulfilling your destiny to be the best person you can be. Oh, I see how it is. <laughs> Before Nick and Kat can really shift their argument into fourth gear, Vanilla Ice just walks into the front yard <laughs> of Kat's family's house and he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. Swinging a chain, <laughs> by the way, like he's about to start a zoot suit riot or something. To a woman that he almost killed an hour ago. Nick's response is the best. He looks over at him and he goes, what the hell is this? <laughs> Kathy, who is this stupid asshole? And th at that point, Vanilla Ice is like, <laughs> yo, yo, now I've got her name. By the way, that seems hard to say. I'm going to call you Kat. That's K-A-T. And she seems a little too charmed by all this, where she's like, oh, you're just the living worst. Man, we talked about what he's wearing, but we didn't talk about his haircut. Because <laughs> in this scene, you, you get a real up close where the back of his skull is shaved into a pattern that makes it look like a brick wall. Uh -huh. And his left eyebrow is also shaved into small patches. And he's wearing a gold earring. And he's still got that orange jacket and the multicolored pants from the warehouse the night before. Honestly, there was part of it's like, I think he cuts his own hair. It's a little too quaffed around the top. Like it, it's too sculpted, I think, for that to be self done. Maybe Jazz and Princess help him out a little bit. You know, let it let, let us see what we can do here. All right, Ice. I want this half of the back of my head to match the jacket I like so much so that when I'm wearing that jacket, it looks like my head is part of the jacket yeah you know ice that's okay you know what it's not the worst decision you've made all day so we'll allow it put that in the journal do you want that or do you want a brownie you can't have both oh come on you know how i like my sweets at night so cat looks over at nick and she says let's let's go inside we're maybe wasting our time here with this this guy's mysterious stranger almost killed me earlier yo yo you're not wasting my time cat k-a-t cat well maybe you're wasting our time and vanilla ice says yo yo check this out cat k-a-t cat if you need me i'll be over there at that house with all of the tiny earths on the front lawn and nick says we don't need you it, look is there someone we should call to come get you is there a piece of paper that you have or the name of a facility or some guardians we should contact meanwhile on the lawn behind him you can see princess and jazz coming out being like vanilla you okay you yo yo i'm doing good i just met my friend cat k-a-t cat all right you know you're not supposed to get out of the yard i know don't worry i have your lighter all right, be sure you bring it back. I will. Does that, do they have snow cones at that house? We're going to go get snow cones. Just get back in the yard. Okay, when I come back, we will go and get snow cones. I'm going to be standing on the yard till you're back in it. I know. That's okay. Did I tell you I made a friend named Cat? K-A-T Cat. Hello, ma'am. He's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> On his way out, he's like, yo, yo, I got to go get a snow cone, but I got one last piece of advice for you, K-A-T, Cat. <laughs> you should drop the zero and get with the hero. Also, <laughs> I'm the hero. She's like, oh my God, he rhymed. Did you hear him rhyme? Nick, he made his words rhyme. Yeah, Cat, it's not that big a deal. Why am I calling you Cat too? Your name is Kathy. I don't know. I kind of like Cat. Vanilla Ice walks away to go get a snow cone. And as he almost gets to the street, he turns around and says, yo, yo, see you later, Dick. And Nick says, it's Nick. It's not Dick. Yo, yo, see you later, Nick. N-I-K, Nick. And then off he goes and Nick and Cat go into the house and the movie cuts back over to Roscoe and May's place. Where they are now just squatting. Yeah. Sir D is watching TV and he's changing the channel so fast you can't see what's on. Jazz is inside and Princess asks Vanilla Ice when he enters. Vanilla, where have you been? Yo, yo, I was just chilling with Cat, K-A-T, Cat. She's the girl who drives that horse. Also, I stole this black book from her. <laughs> they're like whoa 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 what oh no you know you have to take that back oh my god if they press charges they're gonna put him back in the home if they call the cops he's going in the home and we are probably gonna go to jail we can't keep up with him maybe it's for the best maybe it's for the best that they put him away <laughs> 
Let's just, I don't like to be the one to say it either, but you see how he is. You saw it. He got away today. Hey, everybody. Oh, hey. This book smells like cat's fingers. Okay. I like the way her fingers smell. W- listen, buddy, we're going to need you to give that back. Oh, no. The only way it's going to go back is if I get to set it on fire. Nope, nope. Eh, pal, we told you about the matches and the lighters. And and remember what happened to the cat. You remember what happened to the cat? I remember. Yeah, we couldn't get that smell out for, for weeks. So no. we're, we're just going to keep the, the flammables away from you, pal. I know where three knives are hidden. <laughs> All right, uh, Princess, you want to watch them on the knives? You got knife duty tonight? Okay. All right, pal. We're about to get dinner. Do you want chicken nuggets? Some chicken nuggets and some mac and cheese? How's that sound, pal? Oh, that sounds great. Uh-huh. A little ketchup. And a snow cone. Uh, Vanilla flavor. Vanilla snow cone. That's right. That's just a glass of ice. Just get him a glass of ice. It's ice cubes. You don't even have to smash it up. He doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't know. He doesn't know. And it's for the best. Trust me. Across the street, we see the house of Cat where the front gate opens by itself, which is one of many times in this movie that I thought things were about to turn into a horror film. There are moments, and I think it's the way it's shot at times, Uh huh. but there is definitely an air of like, oh, some serious shit's about to go down. And it doesn't really happen. Like the end takes a sudden hard right turn into violence. Uh-huh. Or at least threats of violence, but yes. this movie feels more ominous more often. But I think that's a function of all the like dim lighting and we're shooting a light, you know, yeah. just blasting a light behind a tree or something. And yeah, it is shot kind of like a horror movie. It really is. Sadly, it doesn't turn into a horror movie, but instead, Bo, mm. it becomes the opening credits of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, with, except with a bunch of white people bebopping around. Yeah, so this is Vanilla Ice reading Kat's journal, and it's like a day in the life, one presumes, of Kat. That was your interpretation of this? Yes, because he opens it up and it goes into that, like it, like you said, it's got the opening of Malcolm in the Middle or something. That was not my read on this at all. My take on this was that they just had some film student and allowed he or she to come in and just go wacky basmacky with all the high speed motion <laughs> and the dad from Family Ties is there and he's flipping through the paper real fast and there's all this like crazy running around and it's just bonkers. Right. I didn't think we had stepped into the mind of Vanilla Ice at all. I had a different impression of this. But, I mean, I think it transitions into sort of the family in real life, but I think it it starts as part of his scrambled brain trying to interpret what he's reading as the events of their day. We will agree to disagree on that one. I did like that the younger brother, what's his name? Tommy. He is suffering from child pattern baldness. <laughs> Because his hairline goes all the way back to the middle of his scalp. He almost looks like that kid version of Kyle Gass in the Tenacious D movie yeah, where yeah, he was yeah. totally bald. I also like the fact that Tommy is living free and loose. He is a free range kid in this movie, just coming and going as he pleases. Yeah, they put all their effort into Cat. They yeah. really were hands off on the second one around. Thank God they stopped it too. Yeah, they were real feet up. I think they felt like with Kathy, it wasn't going to get any better. Like, she clearly was going to be the one that was going to keep him out of the terrible homes. Absolutely. You know, Tommy's good-hearted and all. He's making dick jokes and playing Nintendo. That kid's up to no good. Probably going to host a podcast someday and shit on crappy movies. Yeah, aim for middle management, Tommy. That's where you belong. (laughs) The whole family sits on the couch. Four people, one couch. That's real uncomfortable. And they're watching the news because Cat is being featured in a story by the local news team. And it's a real interesting piece that's about her and how she hasn't really done anything truly extraordinary. Hey, you're pretty smart for a small town. And plus Uh, you ride this horse, right? Yes, I ride a horse and I've got good grades and I'm going to college. (laughs) You know, I'm nothing special. I mean, I am, but I'm, you know. Nothing special. Huh. All right. Do you do anything else? Like, do you juggle or do you speak Latin? No, not at all. I mean, I just, 
I huh. brush my teeth All just right. like everybody else. I put my pants on one leg at a time and I just, I date an alcoholic who's four years older than me. Oh, well, now that's something. Different story, but I'm intrigued. You know what? Speaking of alcoholics, uh-huh. let's get my dad in here. Oh. And dad, come on in. Yeah, he, this is my hey father. There, he was on the TV show Family Ties. He was the dad on that show. And um, dad, you got anything you want to say to the camera? Well, I uh, just want to say that my daughter here is uh, just the apple of my eye that's me <laughs> i don't get in front of the camera too much on account of uh well a little bit of a sordid past <laughs> you know it's funny you mention that dad because we've never taken a picture of you I, yeah at christmas I've, or birthdays that's so funny <laughs> i've always tried to be blurred uh wherever i go but i i'll tell you this little gem right here kathy or cat as she insists on being called since yesterday yeah i'll tell you i'm happy to be on the news uh telling the world how much i love her dad come to think of it whenever we go in the grocery store or the bank or any place with security cameras you're always putting on that ski mask mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's so weird that's why i carry that can of spray paint to paint over all the uh, the lenses in uh parking garage cameras that's so strange that probably explains why why when we went to magic world and we got our caricature done you had him draw you but as jim j bullock from too close for comfort that served double duty on the one hand uh always trying to protect the the money maker here try to keep that out of the limelight and also i just think he is a stitch i love jim j bullock and uh, i don't care who hears it. as part of this interview kathy says you know people talk about how they don't get along with their parents but not me i just love my parents to death and they cut to the crazy house where everybody's watching on the couch and yep. somebody yells that's because they don't hate your ass it's sir d i was like oh i get it sir d i know i understand that i know where you're coming from <laughs> i don't know what the holidays are like around sir d's household but my speculations that they were a tense yeah cat says to the reporter i believe that people can be whatever they want as long as they work and what that's what my dad taught me and we're just one big happy family and then chad we get a meanwhile in a bar somewhere else uh-huh. where there is a shot of one of our villains a guy named clark who is played by jack mcgee who has been in, again, one of those actors who's been in literally everything. He's the squatty guy from Scrooged who couldn't even see them nipples on the solid gold dancers. Yeah, and he's really looking. He sees the dad from Family Ties, and he tells the bartender, like, hey, turn that up. Oh, my God. I can't believe it's really him. <clears throat> Uh-oh, we're hot on the trail of the plot, I suppose. It'll show up in about 30 minutes. And then we kind of end all of this with Vanilla Ice just watching all of this like a creep where he's just staring at the image of kathy on the screen i know the television lady yo yo how did my friend cat k-a-t cat get inside that box cat nope nope <laughs> uh no nope, ice it's not I really you out. no she's I not have a hammer she's not really in there i ever since you saw willy wonka in the chocolate factory you have thought that uh like mike tv that everybody's just a little person in the tv uh, that was just a movie that's not how it works oh okay can you read this book that i stole from her i filled it up with all kinds of fudge ice what did you do it's fudge <sighs> who's i'm not cleaning this up I'm not. Oh, it's on his fingers. It's shit. It is shit. It is shit. He put shit in her book. Also, there might be a little lemonade. Jazz, I swear you were supposed to be watching him. I can't watch him all the time. It was like eight seconds. It took him no time to take off his pants and shit on that book. Go ask Roscoe if he has a hose or something. He's not sleeping in the house. Back over at the house of cat, the phone rings and the dad from family ties, he picks it up and says, um, hello, hello. And then his wife and he exchange a look that says, we're all going to die tonight. And so he immediately hangs up the phone. The phone then almost instantly rings again and he picks it up. Hello. And it's some neighbor calling about the news report. And the dad from family ties says, say, uh, did you happen to call and hang up? No. Hmm. This is worrisome. So he hangs up and he's all tense. And Kat says, Dad, what's the matter? And the dad from Family Ties, he changes the subject and says, you know what, family? Let's uh, let's go eat dinner. It may be our last meal. <laughs> cool. What What was that, Dad? Nothing, nothing. I just uh, like us all to get in a uh, little more time together as a family before, well, uh, one or more of us may not be here. Depends on how vindictive they are, I guess. Who? Nobody. Nobody. 
Just thinking out loud. So Chinese, everybody wants some Chinese food. We can share a family platter. Well, you know, that's still a thing. Nick, who's been there the whole time, he leaves to go eat dinner at his house, which is code for get drunk in the yeah. in the parking lot at the church he used to attend. As he's leaving, the younger brother calls Nick a dick because Nick refused to take the brother for a ride in that bitching Camaro he drives around yeah. drunk all the time in the city. <laughs> he says like, hey, I'll pick up Cat at eight and then bails. And the, yeah. this is where Kathy grabs her bag and realizes for the first time that her organizer is gone with all her bills and important papers and shit like that, one presumes. Uh-huh. And she accuses Tommy, and Tommy's like, hey, that's bullshit. I didn't do it. He's like, how about you retrace your steps instead of pointing the finger at me, you filthy sister? Uh, she's like, yeah, yeah, you're right. Let's see. I had it at school. I had it at work. I didn't touch it at Nick's house. And the brother just starts giggling at this unintended joke it's a real proto that's what she said uh -huh. type of a moment shut up anyway let me think where could it be then i got on my horse and that handsome idiot across the street almost killed me but i didn't have it there and you know what that handsome idiot the guy who could probably barely dress himself and wears mittens in the summertime you know what i sure hope that the van from whatever home he lives in hasn't picked him up yet and she leaves to go get her day planner that's across the street i'm just kidding she doesn't do anything but the camera tightens on her and she's like i know he's got it and i know just how to get it back later over at Roscoe and May's house, Vanilla Ice is mocking Cat for planning to go to college. And Roscoe and May are outside screaming and yelling about the motorcycle repairs. And Sir D goes outside and he gets really angry and he screams, Where is my bike? And Roscoe, at this point, has completely taken apart the bike into individual pieces. And Vanilla Ice comes over, Yo, yo, can you put this back together with quickness? And they're like, well, maybe we have it back together tomorrow. And they're like, what? Tomorrow? He's got to be back at his job by Tuesday. If we don't have him back, we're all in trouble with the court. Well, you all can stay here and you can eat as many blue eggs with as much giant salt shaker salt as you want. I've got all kinds of peanut butter and pineapple and sardines and white bread and whatever other crazy fixing uppins you need to make your sandwiches. They're like, well, that sounds like a pretty good deal. They, I guess, are going to stay and continue squatting here. Meanwhile, Clark and Morrissey, who is our other villain of the movie, yeah. uh, who's really the more threatening one, he's... He's kind of the taller, balder dude. This came out a year after Home Alone. Sure. And the casting of these two really feels like Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern knockoffs. They're doing like cartoon sound effects as the other dude, Morrissey, is like twirling his gun and stuff. So uh -huh. it's definitely trying to invoke that kind of goofy slapstick feeling. But also it's a little more serious. Like in, in Home Alone and stuff, it was, they had, you know, crowbars Crow and shit like that. Right. Yeah. As opposed to this movie where it's actual honest to goodness guns. Some of the shit that Morrissey says is fucking chilling yeah i was hoping it was gonna go dark man and it doesn't there's a moment where this movie almost takes a real manhunter turn yeah so they have to locate the town on the map like this whole scene is just kind of introducing the fact that they're trying to find the dad now and clark saying we we got to make sure this gets done right clark says hey i found where he lives no and i was really looking let's get going so they hop in the car and off they go to get the dad from family ties Back at Roscoe and May's house, everybody's just hanging out. And then Vanilla Ice shows up and he is now wearing a black leather jacket that is covered in big white letters that includes the following words. Danger, deep, down by law, freeze, hype, ice, lust, ah yeah, rolling, sex me up, yep, yep. There's a big question mark, the word dope, and then the letters JK surrounded by a star. Yeah, that all sounds right. And you know what's really disturbing about this jacket is that whenever he's wearing it, the phrase sex me up is on the upper right hand shoulder of the front part of the jacket. So the word sex is pronounced in every shot that he's in when he's wearing this particular garment. I wonder if that's why 
the subliminal effect of that created a near constant erection while I watched this film. Good God. Where did he get this jacket? Yo, yo, I found this out in the dumpster. Like, All right, <laughs> Vanilla. That's good. That's good, buddy. Okay, why don't you come over here and let me spray that down with some Glade? My mother stitched this together, much like the coat of many colors. I know she did. His, his mom left him when he was very young. She dropped him a lot. One day she's going to come back and give me a skateboard. I know she will, Vanilla. I know she will. It's going to be a blue skateboard. You've told me all about that every day since we've known each other. So someday, buddy, someday. I can do a half pipe. I know you can. That's when he eats half of a pie. He thinks pie and pipes are the same thing. Don't let him go in the bathroom. He'll he'll never come out of there. He gets so confused. Vanilla Ice says, yo, yo, I'm going to go across the street to sling a schlong. What? He's making up words again. He's talking in his own language. He does that sometimes. <laughs> Gooper duper. I'm going to be out to Kutoas. See, he does that. You have his lighter? Yes. Okay. Ice rolls over to Kathy's house mm. and he passes by Clark and Morrissey who are staking the place out. Would you call that a stakeout? They are parked directly in front of the house. Like they're getting ready to go inside and bring up a cake or maybe a pipe as Vanilla Ice would call it. I see you've got a box of pipes. Can I eat them? I like apple pop. I like chocolate pop. Sometimes I could eat an entire pecan pop. You can even keep the ice cream, although I hope you won't. Vanilla Ice saunters up to the house. This time he's not wearing his baseball hat, so we get to see him and his hair's all quaffed up. Uh, and especially stupid pants in this scene, I would point out. Yeah, real stupid pants and big sunglasses. He looks like a graffiti-clad version of Johnny Bravo. You know, sans the huge pectoral muscles and when he bangs on the door the mother answers and she's like oh hello bangs on the door is an incorrect description he banged the door he walks up and goes thunk nobody knocks a door that way unless you're an asshole or vanilla ice or both and so she opens the door and she's like oh well what can i do for you young man yo yo i am here to see cat k-a-t cat uh, we don't have a cat young man it's not a cat like you pat it's a cat that is a lady and then this little snitch tommy rolls up and mm. is like oh are you looking for my sister weirdo yeah she's at this place called the sugar shack with her boyfriend dick i mean nick is that like willy wonka did you know small people live in the TV? I like snow cones. Do you all have snow cones here? We do. Do you like Tecmo Bowl? I do. I like all kinds of bowls. I like cereal bowls. I like toilet bowls. I like Tecmo Bowls. Mom, can he come in? Can we get rid of Kathy, who S now no, wants to be no. called Cat? <laughs> he can be no. my new brother. No. Will you do me a favor? Go talk to your father and tell him to call 911. All right, I got to go and call the police on you. Remember, cat's at the sugar shack. You're the coolest guy I've ever met. Thank you. Are you going to go get me some sort of bowl? No, I got to call the police on you. You should probably run. Fill it with ice cream if you can. I can't fill it with ice cream. I'm calling the police. Also, a little bit of trivia oh, for you, please. Bo. Sugar Shack was the name of a painting by Ernie Barnes that was featured in the end credits of the TV show Good Times. Hmm. And I would say based on the whiteness of this town, wherever it is that Vanilla Ice is going to go to find Cat looks nothing like that painting whatsoever. No, 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 no. He's going to a gymnasium that is called the Sugar Shack is where <laughs> Vanilla Ice is headed. But on his way out, so I Ice takes off on a geographical mission and stops to ask directions from our thugs in the movie. Yo, yo, do you know where I can find some sugar and also a shack? Or maybe they're the same thing. I would be worried that vanilla ice can make it back over to princess across the street unless she's clapping her hands and shouting his name just follow the sound vanilla ice ice over here ice we've got to get one of those invisible fences for him it sounds cruel i know it sounds cruel but look at what's happened two days in a row and he's gotten <laughs> loose and you saw what happened with the book it's getting worse not better <laughs> Ice gets this long, it's basically the hood's fucking with him where they're like, yeah, yeah, you uh, go down and then make a left. Hey, you know that place that got blown down a couple of years ago? It's a little past that. Oh, no, no, no. You, you, you're fucking with him, Frankie. No, no. It's a right. You got to take a right and then you're going to go across the bridge. I do not know how to make a left. Can you show me? I can make a fist. Vanilla Ice, he goes off to hopefully find the sugar shack. Just wanders aimlessly off into the evening, yes. Cat! 
K-A-T cat. I'm looking for the sugar shack. Can anyone help me? And these thugs are like, now's the chance. Except not now. We're going to come back later. We'll pay a visit to this guy after dark. Dad, he looks out the window and he sees him. And he's like, oh, creeps. What was the point of this? Were they just sitting outside to confirm that he lived there? Was that the whole deal? I, I don't understand why we had this scene just for them to say like, you know what? Let's come back later. No, and this movie isn't competent enough to show that the dad from Family Ties actually sees our movie's bad guys. He just looks out the window and that's all left to the imagination. So we cut to the Sugar Shack, which is this mini warehouse kind of dive bar. It's out in the middle of nowhere. Dude, it looks like a school gymnasium. A small private school <laughs> gymnasium. It's not yeah. nearly as big as a public high school. And inside it are a bunch of white kids just standing around. And on the stage are two male twins playing lead guitar. And there's some dorky other white guy singing a terrible cover of Sly and the Family Stone song, Thank You. Which brings me to just some personal opinions that I would like to share. Uh I absolutely detested music that came out during this era where artists just left and right were sampling the hooks of other popular songs and just plopping them in the middle of their work. We can debate this all day long. I don't have a problem with sampling, of taking other pieces of music and reimagining it into something different. But there were a whole lot of songs where it was just someone rapping. Then it would stop and you would play the hook from a song that you already knew. And it just felt like the success of this piece of work was wholly reliant on the success of something else. I'm done. Yeah, you know, it's just the style of music, right? Like Public Enemy did a bunch of that. It's how it was done it, it, at a certain point. And you're right. Like you can debate the merits of that. I prefer an original beat to a sample, but you know, not everything can be the woo. And the, even the woo is sampled old Kung Fu movies. So, you know, fuck me. So apparently Vanilla Ice went around the block five times and made his way back to Roscoe and May's house and told his friends, I would like to go to the Sugar Shack. They have snow cones. And these three are like, I, apparently this place has snow cones from what he's telling me. And May and Roscoe are out there screaming at each other. Let's just go there. So they escort Vanilla Ice to the sugar shack and they all three walk into this place full of white people and not since the boys from delta house stopped off to see otis day in the night's play has there been a greater discrepancy of white people to black people in a shithole bar except the the reverse oh yeah it's a real photo negative of that situation wait till otis sees us he loves us <laughs> inside nick's trying to get cat drunk he's got a bottle of booze that he's just carried around in his pocket my favorite line of this whole movie is when Nick is is like, hey, do you want a drink? And she says, I'll just have a Diet Coke. And he's like, ugh, Diet Coke cat. I said a drink. And she's like, well, I think you're heavy enough for both of us. And he goes, well, <laughs> cat, it's because I'm a grown boy and I'm a thirsty boy. And then he takes a sip from his flask. No, it's not a flask, Bo. It's an open bottle of brown <laughs> liquor in his hand. If you're walking around anywhere just nipping off an open bottle of brown liquor, you got problems, bud. Telling anybody that you're not only a grown boy, but a thirsty boy, and then taking a pull off a bottle? Yeah. Oh, man. You're about <laughs> to be in the sequel to Clean It's Over, my friend. Cat looks over and sees Vanilla Ice, and she's like, hmm, who is this attempted murderer? Look at this dumb drink of water right here we cut back to the cat household where clark and morrissey they go up to the front door and they confront the dad from family ties hey you remember us yeah do we look familiar to you and the dad from family ties says gentlemen i i don't know you my name is gordon winslow i'm not this jim someone you're looking for uh, all right guys you got me i am jim someone you're looking for i'm not really gordon winslow and hey, you ain't so good at this i uh, yeah look we want the five hundred thousand dollars yo us for no reason hold on a minute let me put on my ski mask real quick wait a second where'd he go <laughs> no wait that's him uh guys it's me i just put the ski mask on i can't lie to you two fellas you might hurt me or my wife or my kid the good one you might hurt the one i like how do you feel about young boys would you hurt one of them because i'm just saying if this is a killing of a sacred deer scenario i'm eh, i'm willing to give up tommy 
Look, ye got till this time tomorrow to give us $500,000 or else we're not going to do anything. <laughs> because 24 hours passes and they don't do jack shit. Let's cut to the sugar shack to waste a, a few minutes of film and life. Yeah, where we are tortured. The big, in quotes, the hit that was <sighs> intended from this movie is this mm -hmm. song. I want to thank you for letting me be my th yeah that's a good song this is not this is called the people's choice and this is really the one that i think best showcases how bad vanilla ice is as a rapper oh it's this one I, yeah i think this is particularly bad did he curse in his songs? Uh, at, at different points in his career, yeah. Sometimes he got a little hardcore. I mean, the whole movie's PG, so there's no yeah. swears in it. I didn't know if this was a sanitized version because of that, or if that was his thing, like, I'm a clean white rapper. The, his record company kind of cleaned him up and packaged him as something that was safe for consumption. Wonder if they ever considered making him a, a clean white Christian rapper. I bet that would have been real popular. That's the the what if of Vanilla Ice. Like if he had signed with Def Jam and uh -huh. had just been able to do whatever was going to be popular. Like, I'm not saying he ever would have been, like, an Ice Cube or something like that, who was, like, an actually powerful rapper. Who had something to say. But he could have been a good hip-hop artist that's just like, no, 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 this is just a good party record, as opposed to... This garbage. Yes, yes, the, this kind of braggadocious sort of thing which is kind of fine if you're really good but he just doesn't have that much flow <laughs> and even at the time there were so many better rappers it's unfortunate like the beastie boys had way more game when it came oh, to, yeah. to just being good rappers all the white kids in the sugar shack they don't know that they don't know from nothing they start I can't call it dancing. They start to move around in slightly rhythmic fashion. And for some strange reason, all of the young men in this place are dressed like members of Lambda Lambda Lambda. <laughs> That's a Revenge right. of the Nerds joke. Vanilla Ice, he gets out on the floor where Cat comes out and joins him. And the two of them end up laying down on the ground where he dry humps her while he's rapping. And I gotta say, during this scene, Cat has noticeably erect nipples. And I was barely looking, Bo. The guy who directed this movie, I looked him up. He had done a whole lot of those slightly R-rated Playboy video things where they just took models out and hosed them down with water and, you know. <laughs> sure had him flop around on the hood of a car but in this it's one of those moments where somebody should have been like can we get a couple of band-aids because this is distracting again it's sexy times here at the sugar shack uh, yeah. and nick is watching while kathy's like oh my god i never do this but oh god just haunt me nick is of course horrified by what's unfolding in front of him please believe all this over there yeah fortunately he's got the boost to numb the pain of this i'll tell you what i'm gonna get a baseball bat later i played baseball baseball everybody here knows it i was the the best baseball player on the small town wolverines me nick after the, this song ends gratefully kathy or aka cat now has this like begrudging respect for ice as a dancer you're just you're so handsome and talented also, I know you're the one who's got my organizer and you've got 24 sexy hours to sexually return it to me, or I'm going to go to the sexy police. You're such a fashion setter with your <laughs> jacket with the ABCs on it. And I like how your shoes don't have any laces. They took those from me. They said that it was dangerous because of what happened with a dog that I used to find. Oh my God. It is so sexy that you have like these people that just follow you around and take care of you. You must be so successful. I'm very successful. I have four pencils at my house and I also have three knives that I've hidden somewhere. I will show them to you. Oh my God. Who's Nick, right? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But if maybe you want to get together sometime after you bring back the organizer. Would you write down your address and phone number? I hope that it all has the number five in it so I know where you live. Oh, silly. You've been to my house a couple of times now. I'm right across. My name is Vanilla Ice. I... I, it's nice to meet you. You are so funny. You are so funny. Did you know that I can rap songs? Yeah. Would you like to see me dance? Yeah, I would love to watch you dance some more, but I need to get back to Nick for right now. I know you called him 
dick. And before she could take off, he goes, if that's all you wanted, why did you even dance with me? And she's like, I just wanted to show you I could. They call that presenting in the animal kingdom. But over on the sideline, like Princess and Jazz, as soon as she's like, I just wanted to show you I could. They both go, this, (laughs) it is embarrassing for everyone involved. (laughs) <laughs> the viewer, the actors, the director, the audience. Poor Janusz Kaminski. Like, I could be doing si- Saving Private Ryan right now. Instead, <laughs> capturing two people yelled diss as they lurch to their left. Ugh. Nick drunkenly grabs Cat by the arm and drags her outside. And they're out in the parking lot, and Nick's like, I hope you're happy. You made a fool of me in there, acting like a slut with what's his name. It's all you do these. Maybe you're going to give it up to some frat guy who you go off to college. Some frat guy who got a scholarship for baseball. Uh, oh. Here's the funny thing. We're giving this character way more depth with this whole baseball subplot <laughs> than the movie itself does. None of that is in this movie. If you don't watch Cool as Ice, and you shouldn't, this character trait of him being like small town failure as a baseball player, can't quite uh get it together still living in the past totally would have been a real character had this movie been written by you know people who gave it even a little bit of a shit no none of that's there pig six fan fiction that it took two seconds chad it took two (laughs) seconds like you can do that in this movie that would be a real thing (laughs) cat just walks off and nick starts banging on his car screaming you get back here and she just wanders off down the street it's almost a david lynch scene of just somebody overreacting as she's wandering down the street at night a car pulls up behind her like a good maybe 10 20 feet away and it turns out it's clark and morrissey and they are right behind this young woman as she's walking home and at this point vanilla ice zips up on his ninja motorcycle and he says yo yo get on my electric bicycle and so she hops on the bike and they just zip away and then vanilla ice takes her back to her home as she gets off he asks her yo yo what is up with tomorrow and Cat, rightfully so, is confused by this question. And he says, yo, yo, what are we doing tomorrow, Cat? K-A-T, Cat. Huh, I'm hoping to get my day planner back. I'm going to go inside now. And so she goes inside the house. And then Vanilla Ice just leans back on the motorcycle sitting in front of this house, puts his hands behind his head with this smug grin. Yo, yo, dissed again. It's so dumb. Oh my god, this movie is so dumb. Cat goes inside and all the lights are off in the house. Yeah, mom and dad are just waiting inside this house in the dark like a couple of psychopaths. Yeah, peeking out the window like, shh, Cat walks in, don't turn on the lights! Keep the lights off, shut up! Stay away from the windows! Keep low! The dad from Family Ties asks his daughter, who is that special needs young man? Never mind, I'm not angry, Cat. You just shouldn't take rides home from strangers. You know what, Cat? Just go to bed. So... Cat goes off to bed. Well, mom and dad stay up and just set like claymores at all the entrances and shit. Like they are on high fucking alert in this movie. Put a bell on the door handle of every door. Did you get the ones at the garage? You gotta get that. Are all the windows upstairs locked? They could climb up the trellis. Go, go, go. God damn it, Kathy. And meanwhile, Ice returns to the sugar shack. I forgot to get my snow cone. Nick and his pals are beating the shit out of Jazz's bike now. Yeah. Take this, motorcycle smash! Yo, yo, why are you hurting that bike? It never hurt you. It only hurts girls. It's only run over three people, and that's when I was driving it, and not Jazz. And that's why he said I couldn't drive his motorcycle anymore. So Nick takes a swing at Vanilla Ice's head, and then Vanilla Ice uses movie fight choreography to beat up eight guys one at a time. In ninja rap skills. It ends with Vanilla Ice open palming Nick in the face, I guess crushing his nose or sending it up into his brain and killing him. This all culminates with the real zinger see ya dick after beating him up and calling him dick earlier in the movie that's about as clever as we're gonna get in uh cool as ice well you know what you go with what works uh meanwhile kathy has done a little tit for tat and swiped 
the driver's license. It, that's state issued ID, Bo. Fair enough. You're right. State issued ID of uh, Vanilla Ice. And meanwhile, her parents are arguing downstairs. It's kind of unintelligible, but one presumes they're arguing about which of the children they're willing to give up and why it's Tommy. Then she wakes up the next morning to the, one of those horrifying moments in this film. One vanilla ice is depositing actual ice cubes into her mouth. Yo, yo, I brought you a snow cone. <laughs> <laughs> it's vanilla flavored. No, 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 it's not. It's just an ice cube. Uh-huh. Vanilla. For a young woman to almost be killed by someone the day before, even if you had a little bit of flirtation later that evening, to wake up the next morning to find this person lying in your bed, dripping water off of ice cubes into your mouth, it's the thing of nightmares. You're about to get kidnapped. Listen, you're about to get taken. <laughs> Here's what I want you to remember. Is he talking to you or me? I'm talking to the girl. Her name is Kat. K-A-T, Kat. Yeah, yeah. We'll put the girl back on if you would. Yes, yes. You are you are about to be taken. But the good news is he's an idiot. What I want you to do is as soon as he tries to put you in the trunk, tell him you're allergic to small spaces. Point over to the bushes and say, look, a kangaroo. When he runs off to go try to ride it, you run away as fast as you can, young lady. The detail in that is tries to ride it. That's the winner. Oh, look, <laughs> finally, a dream come true. It must be my birthday. I've always <laughs> wanted to ride one like a knight. I want to be Sir Vanilla Ice. We also haven't talked about that he's changed his clothes in this scene. And he's wearing these black and white striped shorts. And they have built-in suspenders. It looks like something Beetlejuice would wear to the beach in 1922. <laughs> the 90s were just the shittiest decade, Chad. The music was terrible. The fashion was awful. It's just a dreadful decade. I am not looking forward to that era of nostalgia. There's only so much EMF you can listen to, is what I'm saying. Cat isn't horrified by him being in a room and she's like oh my god what are you doing here did you just break into my room to drip cold water into my mouth <laughs> oh, oh my, my god. god no one's ever done that before so romantic does your entourage know you're here i don't have an aunt named taraj i have an uncle his name is sam he works for america oh my god God, you're so political. It's so interesting <laughs> to hear you talk. You asked me to bring your day planner. Here it is. It's full of food that I ate yesterday. It's covered in fudge. If you put it in the freezer, it breaks off into tiny chunks that you can take with you when you go out looking for dogs. I have a question. Who's Monique? You know, because I found her number when I took your state issued ID. Just, who's Monique? And he's like, I don't know. The most honest line delivery in the movie. I don't know. Who are you? Is that who you are? I thought that your name was Kat, K-A-T, Kat. Did you change it earlier in the day? Is your phone number just a bunch of fives? I tried to call you earlier, but no one picked up. Oh my god, your name is John Van Owen. That's so interesting. Oh, yes it is. What else is my name? Oh, it's just, just that. Everyone calls me Vanilla Ice. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, we, we met. You broke into my bedroom and were feeding me ice. I remember that happening the other day. Yeah, that was that was right now. Look at all these fish in the fishbowl. I think that they're all named John Van Owen. Oh my god, I love how funny you are about fish. You know what? I need to change clothes. Yo, yo, you can change your clothes in front of me. It is all right. I've seen a naked lady before. Oh my god, you don't even think I'll do it. I'll do it right in front of you. I don't even care. Oh my god, this is so crazy. But before she can take off her top, Tommy busts in and is like, Oh my god, it's that guy I like so much. You're the coolest dude in the world! Are you in here banging my sister? No, I was just being nice to her, I think. Are you thirsty? Would you like some of this snow cone? I still have some in my hand. Also, we can drink some of the water. The fish don't need it all. Man, you're cool. Will you take me for a ride on your motorcycle after you finish having sex with my sister? Which, that is actual dialogue in this movie. Yeah. And Vanilla Ice says, yo, yo, I don't understand what those words mean, but okay. So he decides he's going to leave from the window that he used to break into her house. 
<laughs> right. A vanilla ice goes around front to wait for Cat after he gets sprayed with lawn sprinklers. I think that this is this movie's attempted at humor. Yeah, which just sends him scurrying like a ferret. Oh, it is not Saturday. It is not time for my bath. Oh no, it's a yard shower. Cat immediately comes out the front door wearing a short sunflower dress and a denim jacket. She looks very 90s. And Cat goes over and against my better judgment, she gets on the back of this bike with this jackass that she met less than 24 hours ago. And these two zip off to a new home build construction site to have a very romantic montage. Which is them just playing grab ass around this construction site while more music plays. Yeah, it goes on forever. The movie does point out a small pile driver rhythmically banging into the ground where no one's working at this site, by the way. It's just the pounding machine. Yeah, because that's going to come up later. There's a great line where they're as they're hanging out and getting to know each other. Vanilla High says, yo, yo, you have a family. And she's like, "Uh uh-huh, I do. It's so interesting that you would ask me that. You know, all the right questions are so deep. Yo, what's that like? Oh my God, you are so damaged and interesting. Yeah, I've been all over the place. I'm kind of from everywhere. But what I've learned, it's not where you are. It's where you're going. Do you want to see how fast I can run? I can run like the wind. And we get a couple of more pearls out of this dumb dumb where he's like, yo, (laughs) if you ain't true to yourself, you ain't true to anybody. And if you're living your life for someone else, you ain't living. That's a straight up fact. One of my jobs besides stocking milk at the IGA in the Piggly Wiggly, I write on pieces of paper that get stuffed into fortune cookies. I've taken that to the grocery store, too. I like to put notes in other people's food, just little things to make them feel good in the day. Like, I see you. I'm watching you. I'll see you soon. At night, when I can't sleep most days, I go hide in the bushes. And when people walk by, I tell them, I'm looking at you right now. And I wait for the police to show up and take me home. I go on what I call creepy crawls. Did you know when the lights are on inside a house and you stand this far away from the window, they can't see you looking in? It's a game I play called Invisible Man. That's how I saw a naked lady for the first time. And every time after that. (laughs) She ends up kissing Vanilla Ice because of how interesting he is. We didn't mention there is a second montage attached to the first montage. The first one is at a construction site, but then there's a second one that they tack on where they're riding horses and motorcycles. Right. The kiss is what breaks up the montages. We get montage (laughs) number one, kiss, then montage number two, Uh post-kiss, where, like you said, we just ride around on horses for a while and then he just takes her home and it's night already we've passed that 24 hour clock that clark and morrissey laid down the day before this house should have blood all over the walls inside this place it should be the opening of the that pamela smart movie (laughs) where they're just like oh my god we gotta get police here immediately but no no they're just still sitting in the car out front like so what do we do he didn't bring us the money i don't know you want to go up and shoot him i don't have any bullets ah crap i really thought that the empty threat would get us to 500 g's huh you think we should kidnap one of his kids what if we sell the gun how much is that worth i don't know he probably get 35 dollars i saw he had a nintendo there with tech mobile we could probably take that play it for a little while and then sell it for 22 bucks at the pawn shop what you do is you just go for the Hail Mary every time. That works like two out of three You times. gotta beat the Raiders. You gotta beat the Raiders. Oh, That's yeah. That's how you win. Well, sure. Bo Jackson is the best in the game. <laughs> so Cat and Vanilla Ice, they return back. And Cat goes up to the front porch with her new boyfriend. And it's here that she gives Vanilla Ice a ring. Uh. Yo, yo, is this candy? And she's like, no, 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 don't, don't eat it. It's, it's something special. You just, you wear that. And that way, you know, the difference between me and Monique. Why don't you wear it? And then I'll know that the person who's wearing the ring isn't Monique. Well, silly, because Monique might have the same ring. But if I have it and neither of you have rings. Up, it's not, it's not candy. Do not put that in your mouth. <laughs> you silly boy. It tastes like pennies. 
and your fingertips. That's also what your day planner tastes like. Well, it's what it used to taste like. It tastes totally different now. Now it tastes like fudge, but not chocolate fudge, like the fudge around the corner. You are so funny. You are funny. About this time, the dad from Family Ties, he opens the door. He's like, Cat, where have you been? We've been worried sick. Yo, yo, she was with me. I learned to drive a horse today. Cat, get inside. I don't want to hear about driving or horses or anything. Just get inside. Vanilla Ice, you have to leave. Listen, I know what you're up to. I know you're in cahoots. Now get off my property. With those two guys sitting in a car about 40 feet away from where we're talking right now. (laughs) Yeah, we can hear you over here. He ain't with us. You think we would associate with somebody who looks like that? You gotta be kidding me. We've been trying to call you all day. Did you know that Nick is in the hospital and your new friend over there put him in the hospital? Yo, yo, that is true. I did put Nick in the hospital. I almost killed him last night. Sometimes the rage comes over me and I black out and I just wake up and then things have changed and that's why I have to have my entourage. We try to leave before things get really complicated. That's why we can't stay in the same place for too long. Vanilla Ice, he leaves on his ninja motorcycle. And inside Cat's parents, they decide to tell her the truth. But we come back over to Roscoe and May's house and Sir D and Princess and Jazz. They're watching May pop lock as she's sort of dancing around for no reason at all vanilla ice does weigh in on her performance Uh uh-huh which he pronounces and i quote slamming i guess back at kathy's house cat there's there's something you need to know (laughs) my my real name is jim whoever it is you're looking for i used to be a police officer my my partner was a crook i did the right thing cat i i gave up evidence for a crime that he committed and they put me in police custody now some guys want money for me and they're patiently waiting in a car outside and they've demanded half a million bucks look i need to know cat do you have a half a million dollars like that's a silly question to ask of course you don't have half a million dollars look these guys are kind of lax with their deadlines and you know we passed the original one and they really need this money i've turned off all the lights i'm hoping that they think we've moved to another town i don't know what to do cat i don't know what to do you need to be careful around strangers cat and that means this vanilla ice fellow you're a liar he was doing everything for my protection no 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 cat he he wasn't protecting you he was setting you up he was working the job from the inside also your mother and i are very concerned about this cat you're kind of a brilliant young girl and he's don't you say these things about me don't you say i'm brilliant and beautiful how dare you you know i love you honey i can't it's how i feel i just don't want you settling for someone who's you know hell's with all the other kids in town their moms and dads have gotten divorced or they have drug habits or or the dads tried to sexually molest them you two have done none of that all you've done is love me and encourage me and help me to grow as a human being I'm sorry, Kat. It's just your mother and I, well, we're we're partners in this, and, and that means in raising you, and, and we hope you feel like you're a partner with us, too, that we're, we're all one family, all pulling together. I don't even think I know who you are anymore. Jim, whatever his last name is you're looking for, if that is your real name. Whatever name is on my birth certificate, Kat, the, the name that matters is Dad. That's what I am. It's who I'll always be. It's the best thing I've ever been. Leave me. Leave me alone. All right, just don't go sneaking off with that, well, I hesitate to call him this, but a simpleton. Some strange reason. During this whole conversation, there's a plate in her room that's blue, and it has three lemons on it. It's to avoid scurvy, Chad. I like a movie that has a health tip buried into the sea. Like, all right, I should be eating more citrus. We cut to the next morning where Vanilla Ice is sitting on his motorcycle, where else, out in front of Cat's house. Hi, Cat. It is me. I came to see you again. About this time, Cat comes outside and, yo, yo, would you like to ride on my super fast motorcycle? And Cat says, leave me alone. (gasps) You leave me alone. All of the men in my life disappoint me. Yo, yo, Cat. K-A-T, Cat. Who are you being true to now? Is this you or the dad from Family Ties? I just don't know you. I'm just so confused and worried and you're so handsome and simple. Yo, yo. Crack. Paper, paper. Be who you are supposed to be, cat. I just don't know who you are. And he's like, that's right. You don't know me. What is my name? Where did I come from? I knew you would be like this. And then she storms off and he's like, no, really? I don't know where I am now. 
I'm starting to get quite scared. Vanilla! Back over here, buddy. Vanilla! Oh, princess, I forgot where I was again. We got toaster waffles, buddy. Over here, come on. Are they the kind with the butter? I can put some butter on them. You got it, buddy. I like the butter. I know you do. They got butter and, and we got toaster waffles. And I got I got some Yoo-Hoo for you. So he drives his bike emotionally, I suppose. Yeah, he just takes off. The rage is kicking in. Good thing Nick getting around. He might kill him. This is where the blackout starts to happen and he starts to forget stuff. Popping wheelies and spitting up dust and all that kind of nonsense. Yeah, my favorite is the shot of him just laying on the, the top of his bike as the camera spins around him in the desert and whatnot. There's a lot of, like, Zoolander blue steel kind of looks that he gives in this movie. This is what I do when I get dizzy from spinning. I have the camera go backwards around me, and I get undizzy. That's how famous I am. I can make the world dizzy when I get tired of making me dizzy. We cut to Cat, and she's right riding around with her friends in a convertible and they're all trying to convince her to go apologize to nick for being an uncontrollable drunk vanilla ice comes back to roscoe and may's house and he lays down on this outside red leather couch and tommy's little brother he comes over and he has now cut his own hair to look like vanilla ice's hair which it doesn't it looks like ron paul's hair It is a real Rand Paul look now that you say that. That's very funny. He's like, you said that you would take me for a ride on your bike. And at first I didn't believe you because I didn't think anyone would give you a license. But then I saw you driving a bike. Oh, I don't have a license. I just get on that bike and ride. Oh my God, you are so fucking cool. Will you take me for a bike ride? Yo, yo, that sounds like a great idea. My lawyer said it's not kidnapping if you consent. Do you consent to me taking you on a motorcycle ride? Oh my God, yes. I can sit to everything. Then we get another montage of Sir D, Princess, and Jazz just dancing around while May and Roscoe still try to fix his motorcycle. Right, but it's going better now. Like, they're well on their way to getting the thing fixed at this point. Vanilla Ice and Tommy, they ride through town with Tommy riding bitch. And Tommy sees Nick, and he's in his convertible, and his face is all patched up with a giant bandage across his nose. And Tommy just gives Nick the finger. It's all right. I like seeing it. <laughs> I, I like seeing kids uh, flip off do. adults. I think that's funny. And then uh, Roscoe and May are, are even further along with the bike. Vanilla Ice returns Tommy back to his house. And now Clark and Morrissey's car is gone. Who knows where they went? And Tommy rushes inside. And before he enters, Vanilla Ice says, yo, yo, Tommy, I'm leaving for good. And Tommy's like, all right, man, see you later. You're the coolest. And then he immediately sneaks into uh, kathy's room vanilla ice goes into cat's bedroom yeah again he's no stranger to sneaking into this room in particular houses have regular size doors and then they have tiny doors that you have to jump to get into they also have doors that have smoke that come out of them up on the top of their house you can use all of these to get into a house. When I'm on my nighttime creepy crawls, most of the time I have to get in through the see-through doors. And then I hide under the bed and I listen to people sleep. It's relaxing to me. I like to hear them talk when they sleep, especially when they bounce up and down on the bed together. It makes me feel funny. Sometimes it makes me angry and I black out. And then that's when we have to leave the towns. Whenever that happens, I usually get a new knife that I found somewhere. I just wash it off in the river. And then we go and do more of our dancing and rapping in a new town. Oh, Lord, Lord. We might have to kill him. (laughs) So he goes in her bedroom, he takes off the ring, drops it in the fishbowl that's got 30 plus fish in it. Then Vanilla Ice leaves through the window from whence he came, gets on his ninja motorcycle and off he goes. Inside the house, Tommy is playing some Tecmo Bowl when Clark and Morrissey make good on their promise to exact revenge on the dad from Family Ties. And this whole thing is truly a sober version of Home Alone as these two misshapen crooks confront a small child in a red jacket. Long story short, they abduct Tommy. Let me say a couple of things about this moment in particular speaking of horror movies there's a moment where tommy is like i'm calling the police i know from watching america's most wanted how to handle this and morrissey the scarier of the two is like oh yeah you see the one that i was on kid it's about to be milk carton time and then he actually says like i'm gonna get you and runs at him 
and it's like oh jesus this is kind of horrifying yeah he rips the phone cord out of the wall and again this could go sideways at any moment and this is not as bad as he gets in terms of shit he says about this kid he's got issues i guess we all do just how big and dark are they and so cat comes home and finds tech mobile paused on the television yeah and then she turns it off that's a real jerk move it was paused for a reason right you gotta play the whole first half again anyway she goes to her bedroom where she finds the ring in the fishbowl she sticks her hand in the fishbowl and pulls it out and then when she does you can see all of the fish shit swirling around in the water yeah yeah thank god for hd huh so there's a mini montage of her being sad and staring out the window and whatnot and meanwhile the bike's all fixed the posse's like hey we got to get out of here like you've been stealing and shit on books there's no (laughs) been only a little bit of violence but you did put somebody in the hospital already so vanilla i got look look me in the eyes vanilla look me in the eyes did you set a fire vanilla did Did i set set a fire did you set a fire i saw a fire did you set a fire on a person we got it boys we gotta go he just pissed himself we gotta go no i don't want to leave yet i have a special feeling about the girl cat k-a-t i did not get my snow cone yet first of all it's not a good idea for you to get too attached to people outside the people who take care of you because there's some things that maybe they could find out about you that would make it really difficult for all of us i know so we just need to go if you need to say goodbye to her you can do that but then we need to leave all right i'm gonna go say goodbye and over at the kathy's house honey we're home Tommy, Kat, your mom and dad are back from the grocery store. Do me a favor. Could you wash this ski mask? It's getting a little ripe. I've been wearing it for weeks now. Also, where's that rascal Tommy? I saw the funniest thing on the way home, and uh, you know how he likes stories about animals pooping. Tom, Tommy, Tom, Tom, Tom Alicious, Thomas the Tank Engine, Tommy from Alice, Tommy the Blind Kid who plays pinball, Tom Wopat, Tom Snyder, (laughs) Tommy, Tom, Thompson, Tom, Tom, T. Uh, honey i don't think he's here i like the fact that when questioned hey cat uh what happened to tommy weren't you supposed to pick him up from hmm? little league and she's huh? like who what? Who? Uh, you know what funny that you mentioned that i went by to pick him up from little league and he wasn't there so i just i don't know came home you what yeah you didn't ask questions you didn't put on a ski mask and see if anybody had seen him anywhere so they wouldn't know your identity you know he's got quite an independent streak i don't want to step on his own sense of uh, self-reliance and and self-determination honey what is all of this hair over by the sink what has happened to our tommy they're rightfully kind of freaking out and then vanilla ice shows up at the door unannounced funk yo yo and they open up the door the dad does and he's like listen kathy's not here meanwhile kathy is like two feet over his shoulder hello does she have a twin oh my god is she a ghost did something happen to cat can you not see her no you idiot i was lying to you look you've got to get out of here why were you pretending to be a ghost she's not a ghost you simpleton we've lost our son you've got to get out of here i know you're working with the guy who almost saw a solid gold dancers and nipples in the movie scrooge and a guy who was a stand-in for daniel stern in the first home alone you get out of here first of all number one am not two here's this cassette tape that i mysteriously have oh that's right i forgot yeah was he's walking up to the porch there's an envelope with the cassette tape in it this probably belongs to you or maybe some elves or possibly a witch that lives in the woods behind your house i think somebody might have made you a mixtape it could be nick if so i would expect some songs with apology as a central theme get out of here vanilla ice kathunk the dad for family ties he closes the door runs over to some cassette tape player pops it in and plays the tape where we hear tommy say mom dad hey how are you guys i'm fine here with my new friends look by the way you have 24 more hours to pay these guys all the money you owe them i know they said that two days ago but you know what they really mean it this time ding dong 
I swear to God, if it's that simpleton from across the street, what is it, Vanilla? Oh, Nick, what happened to your nose? What's going on? You know what? Forget that. Something's happened to Tommy. Huh. You know, I saw Tommy earlier. He was on the motorcycle with that, well, I don't know what to call him exactly, the the really violent kind of slow fella. Are you talking about the guy who's been staying across the street over at the crazy house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The flop house. Sure. What was he doing when you saw him? Come on, Nick. Give me all the details. He was just on his motorcycle and it looked like he was mouthing the words, this'll be cool how I'm kidnapping this kid. But what about Tommy? Can you give us all the details about Tommy when you saw him? What was he wearing? Did he see you? Did he wave at you? Did he smile back? He waved at me he made a gesture of recognition and i i took it as sort of a a cry for help was it a real enthusiastic wave where you'd kind of go from the elbow or was it more of like a wave with all five fingers come on nick give us all the details we're gonna have to tell the police when i eventually call them like i should have done two days ago when they first showed up at my house seeing as i'm in police (laughs) in the witness protection program no it wasn't all five fingers did he give you a thumbs up come on nick give us all the details um no i think maybe he he thought that would alert his captor did he hold up his index finger as if to say hey nick you're number one or did he point at you like you buddy it was more of a middle-ish more of a, a a center a center finger Oh my God, are you saying that my little Tommy gave you the bird? It was more of a indicating gesture. Oh my God, what is happening to this family? Nicholas, let me ask you a question. When he was giving you the bird, did you happen to look at his lips? Was the letter F perched on him? Yeah, Mrs. Cat, it was, yeah. I swear to God. You know, Dad from Family Ties, this is all your fault. You're such a bad father. We knew what we were doing. We decided early. We just weren't going to care about him. I know, I know. But you were the one who said, go buy him the Nintendos. Go buy him the Nintendos. And I was like, I don't think that's a good idea. He doesn't read. He just sits around here and he plays the Tecmo Bowl. And you know what he's doing upstairs in his bathroom? He's in there just pleasing himself all the time. He's got a problem. Look, he cut all his hair off. That's a cry for help, Dad, from Family Ties. It kept him quiet. I don't regret the decision to buy the Nintendo. As for the room, better there than everywhere else in the house. I mean, if it's so bad, we'll put him out in the yard. I honestly don't care, Kathy. You make those decisions. I'm going to go balance the checkbook, okay? Let me know when you find our son dead or alive. Quite honestly, I could go either way right now. I really wasn't going to return the call. Do you think I should? There might be a reward somehow. I don't know how the hell that would work. Can we be charged if we just don't alert anyone? Probably. What are they going to do? Put us in double secret identity probation hiding? Yeah. Well, what are we going to tell Cat? I talked to a lawyer to find out how do you divorce a guy who's not a real person. And I explained the details to him and I tacked on at the end, you're not a real man either. There, I said it. I've been thinking about that for, I don't know, 15 years. Now is not the time. We Look, one thing at a time. It's never the time with you. It's never the time. Can we figure out what we're going to do with our dead son? You can figure it out. I don't even know if he's my son and I gave birth to him. Anyway, where are we in this fucking movie? The dad is like, by the way, the fact that vanilla i showed up with this tape totally proves that he's in on this i would agree with that this is all very incriminating if only i had the blood of your son all over my hands and my leather jacket could i look more guilty he did everything but write a book called if i did it dad says like all right finally i'm calling the cops it's about time happy is like johnny isn't a bad guy dad who who are you talking who's johnny that's what i said and i smiled in that special way dad are you talking about that idiot oh my god you know his first name all right i'm calling the cops she grabs the tape yoink and then just takes off running nick chase after her hello officer yeah it's me tim what's his name that you're looking for and so our posse is hanging out in front of roscoe's just listening to music when cat shows up And Ice, in maybe the most ironic line of the movie, is like, yo, yo, you need a psychiatrist because of how crazy you are. If you say the right things, they will give you gummies full of magic that will make you sleepy. Also, with me, they got a silver spike and they hammered it right up next to my nose. And it made me feel much calmer about everything. 
Coquette takes the cassette tape and says, look, everyone here, you need to listen to this tape. And she puts it in a tape player and presses play and everybody listens to the same message we heard earlier. But at this time, in the background, Vanilla Ice leans in and he's like, yo, yo, hold on a moment. There is some clanging in the background. It sounds like that tiny pile driver from yesterday when we went to the wood and hammer garden. Wait, what is that beat doing? Doom, 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 doo, doo, doom, doom. Doom, 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 doo, doo, doom, doom. Yeah. Cat says, you're right. It's the construction site. Yo, yo, that is it. So Vanilla Ice and his crew and Cat, they all get on their bikes and they head out to the construction site. Do you think they have bulldozers there? I like big trucks. We know you do, buddy. We know you like big trucks. You like the tractors and you like the trucks. If they have one, I want to let you know, you can go sit in it, but you cannot ride in it. Do you understand the difference? I'm going to try to make the scoop go up and down. Buddy, it's not going to go up and down, okay? You can sit in it, and if you want, you can pretend to make it go up and down, but I don't want you to touch anything, okay? I'm touching it. No, but get your hands out of your pants. This is my rifle. This is my gun. Y'all, we got to get out of this town. So we're at the construction site, and Morrissey and Clark have tied Tommy up in a room on the second story of a partially built new house. And while they're there, Vanilla Ice says, Yo, yo, it is nighttime and I do not see them anywhere. Maybe we should leave. I also don't see a bulldozer or a crane or a tractor or a backhoe or a train that I could ride in. They don't even have an earth mover. That is my favorite truck because it sounds like it moves the entire earth, even though it doesn't. So Vanilla Ice and his entourage and Cat, they all drive off. And then we cut to upstairs where Clark and Morrissey are holding Tommy, where they have Tommy tied up. And then out of nowhere, all four motorcycles blast through the walls of the second story floor room that this kid's being held in to save Tommy. Uh huh. And then there's a fight that breaks out where it's Ice versus Morrissey, kind of the tough uh, that was threatening Tommy more directly. And then the other guy, Mr. You can barely see them nipples. He's kind of fighting Princess and Jazz. And then they get Tommy out of there. Obviously, they beat the shit out of him. You know, these are young, healthy people and uh, fighting old men. And they, they beat up these old men. When Vanilla Ice beats up Morrissey and knocks him out, there are Tweety Bird sounds that roll in. Yeah, periodically they drop in these very cartoonish sounds. And a lot of times when you're at Roscoe's place, there's this kind of circusy, weird, animated style music. And yeah. it does have this weird tone thing where occasionally it feels very slapstick. And, you know, Home Alone is a good reference point for it. It, it feels like it's trying to ape that stuff, but it just doesn't have the chops for it and it just feels wildly out of place because also in this scene before the motorcycles bust in morrissey is telling tommy like your parents are never gonna see you again telling him hardcore shit like your face is gonna end up on a milk cotton kid it's kind of scary stuff we cut to the cops questioning roscoe and may yeah and they're like my grandson ain't around I don't know where he is. He's going back to Harvard. He did. He's got a chemistry final. And the cop's like, oh, Jesus Christ. This I can't even imagine the paperwork I'm going to have to do on this guy. <laughs> about this time vanilla ice and his crew they all show back up but this time they have clark and morrissey strapped to the hood of their own car with rope and the dad from family ties he is so happy to see that his son isn't dead the mom uh, not so much uh pops walks over to vanilla ice and shakes his hand and says thank you thank you vanilla ice and then cat walks over to vanilla ice yo yo you know i'm out of here so what are you going to do now, college girl? Mocking that education is something one shouldn't do. And Kat says, mm -mm, uh, you know, I don't start college till tomorrow. Maybe I can just get on the back of your motorcycle? Which she does. Let's G-O go. Which is the actual line of the movie. We don't have to spell it for emphasis. He actually does that in the film. Nick shows up, mostly drunk, probably with his baseball bat in the back seat of his convertible. God, do you even know what you're doing? Hmm. 
I hope not. Yo, yo, I don't know what I'm doing either. And then Vanilla Ice and Cat speed off on his motorcycle, but they get a little halfway down the road, a la Back to the Future 1. He turns the motorcycle around and then speeds up towards the front of Nick's car. And instead of crashing into it, sending both he and Cat head over ass into the asphalt, which is what one would expect to happen, the motorcycle magically flies into the air like E.T. as Vanilla Ice yells, out yo yo cat k-a-t cat hi yo k-a-t cat away and yeah it jumps the car and end of movie and then we get another music video which i didn't watch because i had enough of this music i'm turning this shit off a a song called get with it that sounds good yeah maybe i i should never go back and listen no and that's the thing yes that is the end of cool as eyes and that's the real takeaway is that no one should ever watch cool as eyes i never got my snow cone (laughs) we're gonna get you the (laughs) special cherry buddy that's the whole movie yeah it's a whole lot of nothing like this subplot with the dad being in witness protection like why are they trying to pinch him for half a million dollars i don't know at no point did he steal money from the police or anything were they cops yeah that's the thing is that they were supposed to be dirty cops Uh, uh, so i don't know where this money can yeah right none of it makes any sense it is the laziest shit this is more of a movie than spice world as i said uh previously spice world's more entertaining the spice girls are better actors as a group than vanilla ice is the music in spice world is, is more tolerable yeah. than the music in this movie that's another big thing this movie has the audacity not to feature ice ice baby how dare you at least wannabe was showing up in spice world they had all their hits in yeah it, didn't they yeah <laughs> really yeah and this was them trying to push this whole other album and not doing ice ice baby in this that seems mind-boggling even to me. in credit right put it there filmmakers probably thought they were going to make a lot of money off this and they didn't want to have to get a little bit of that cheddar to the ice ice baby crew i'm sure that there was some corporate reason to do that but the one thing that you want to come to this movie for is the one song you know from vanilla ice that is not in this movie and that's crazy to me and and also we did not talk too explicitly about this but he cannot act he is such a bad bad actor no he's not very good and i have a great deal especially after doing the introduction and really diving into the story of vanilla ice i have a much higher degree of empathy and sympathy for the dude and don't think he's a bad person by any stretch but he is not an actor. No. Which is the core theme of this season, Bo. <laughs> a flop is born where yeah. singers want to be actors and they're no good. But I have a question for you. Would you consider a rap battle to be a form of a singing competition? Yes. And speaking of singing competitions, this is my segue. Mm-hmm. Coming up on episode five of season 15, uh-huh. we have When Justin Met Kelly. The American Idol movie starring Kelly Clarkson and runner up Justin Guarini. 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 Abominable. 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 Sinjinson? Sminjinson. Sinjin. Smin. Sinjinson. Yet another movie that I have not seen for this season yet. And in fact, of all the movies this season, the only one that I've seen was Kiss Meets a Phantom of the Park. And I saw that when I was four, five, six, whatever the tr- math yeah. on that works out to be. So I really hadn't seen any of these. So I'm excited, not really, about watching When Justin Met Kelly. And if memory serves, the screenwriter of this film was also the screenwriter of spice world spice world that is correct Mm -hmm. so it's gotta be terrible i don't know how it could be good but also i don't know very much about either of these people oh well you come back bo in two weeks time i'll give you the lowdown on both of them as well as an overview history of singing competitions Note to self, go find a whole lot of stuff out about Kelly Clarkson and Justin Guarini and American Idol and singing competitions. And it's pronounced Guarini. 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 Guarini.
All right, y'all. Bo, as we always do at the end of our episodes, any final thoughts on Vanilla Ice in the movie Cool as Ice? Just uh, once again, a a, a silent gratitude that I can purge myself of all things Vanilla Ice, probably for the remainder of my life. Yep. I, I know as much at this moment right now as I will ever know about Vanilla Ice again. That's fair. I'll see if I can dig up some more dirt on the dad from Family Ties just to sort of ease the pain. Let me tell you about all the Tremors sequels that he, he keeps making with Jamie Kennedy. Uh, there's a new one. What are they up to? 10, 12, 15? Uh, nine or 10, yeah. Everybody's got bills to pay, Bo. He's still playing Bert. He likes <laughs> guns. <laughs> As always, like, rate, review. We love getting feedback from everyone in social media. You can email us at picksixmovies at gmail.com. You can go to our website, picksixmovies.com, or all over different places where you can subscribe and tell a friend, whatever you want to do. We love doing the show. We love hearing from everybody who listens to it. So we will see you in two weeks' time with a whole bunch of nonsense about a whole bunch of garbage as we entertain When Justin Met Kelly, the fifth episode of this season of Flop is born and that's gonna be a yes from me dog i still want my snow cone